you want to send me, that'd be amazing. Thank you. Um, all right, cool. All right, so what I have here is, I don't know if you guys, if you go to BeBetterGolf.net, you'll see a post about differential learning, and uh, I've been learning all this different stuff and, and corresponding with all these different um, uh, doctors. Yeah, uh, I've been corresponding with all these different doctors and PhDs in because I'm trying to get, like, beyond technique and, like, all the stuff that happens and all the, like, the good things that happen. And, okay, like, because I think we all know what we want to change in our swing. It really comes down to how do you do it, you know? So how you do it is, so so the most powerful thing that I've seen as far as changing someone's motor program for somebody that is a an adult learner of golf, so somebody who started learning when they were older, um, which is, see, the thing about golf is that most of the people who teach golf learned golf before puberty, and most of the people who uh, take lessons from people who teach golf learn golf after puberty, and I think it's a totally different experience that needs to be attacked a totally different way. The best way that I've seen scientifically about actually making changes happen and improvements happen is through this thing called differential learning. And my interpretation of differential learning led me to these cards. So on these cards, you have like 50 different variations of ways to swing. Some of them really weird. Some of them not so weird. This says sumo on it and then odd. And I'd have to, what, hit a high draw. So that's basically stand like a sumo and hit a high draw. Um, This one is uh, get low on this side and then get high on that side. And... um, That's basically like in your backswing, get really low, or in your backswing, get really high, you know, and still try to hit it hard. So you get all these different challenges, and you still got to hit it hard. Important mixed up in this card is a bunch of these drive cards. So you just have to hit a a solid drive. That's all you have to do. And um, so it's been been really cool. And I'm going to be coming up with a – there's there's this guy out of Finland, really, really nice guy. Uh, He's also a Ph.D., who is good at making apps, and he's going to ma- be making an app uh, that utilizes some of this, but like to a much higher degree. There's actually going to be over 10 million, actually I think more, more than 10 million. It might be 10 million times 2 would be 20 million times 2 again would be. So it might be like 40 million different variations of ways that you can swing. And that sounds like, okay, well, I, I only want to swing one way. But in swinging all these wildly different ways, your body, it's called stochastic resonance, your body starts to realize, okay, what do I have to do? So let me know. I'm going to walk over to to my mat and hit some balls. Let me know if you guys can actually hear me. Maybe you can hear me through my headphones when I walk over here. So as I go over here, if you guys can still hear me as I'm standing here, that would be amazing because usually this type of thing doesn't work, but maybe it would work. So, can you hear me over here? Let me see. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, I'm just going to hit some shots. And Oh, okay, good. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Les. Okay, so maybe it is working. Okay, so let's... Going through the deck here, I got this thing called step and swing. And then it says E. So, that would mean that I go over here and I pick out an even-numbered club, so like eight iron, and I have to do step and swing. So that would be here, I get set up, and then I come back and I step and swing, so you have to step and hit it. So i got to athletically figure out how the heck I'm going to do this. That would be successful. Impact was not awesome, but it would be successful. Go to the next one here. So now I go to the next card which is blank, which sometimes I call the blank cards my repeat cards where I have to do it again, but I'll just I'll just go through. All right, so this is a really, it's kind of a goofy one, but it's, but it's fun. It's called a 180 draw, so I have to, thanks, guys. I'll have to hit, um, I'll have to jump around, do a 180 spin, and then hit the ball. So, watch. As we go over here, and this whole thing is to kind of unlock the inner athlete Forget about technique and just like try to hit it solid. So I have to jump in the air and then turn around and hit it without even, you know, not without thinking or anything. Oh, 
That was a real fail there. That was bad. I should be able to do better than that. Okay, let's try that again. So. Mm, that's better. That was better. My, let's see, what's the next? So that was 180 draw. And the next one is going to be this thing called as low as possible. So all I got to do, the, the only thing I have to do is hit this club as low as possible. Hit this shot as low as possible. So we go here. Hit it as low as possible. That wasn't very low, was it? I'm going to try that again. So basically I do this until I, until I do it successfully. Hopefully I can do just one of all these. That was very good. All right. So as low as possible was failed on the first one, but then success on the last one. And you want to fail, really, I mean, about half the time you do it. All right, so this one's a little goofy. So it's back, make a big circle, and then hit it, and hit it high. So it has kind of a, a, a shape and a, a tap and a shape to do it. So that'd be back, make a circle, and then hit it. And But i got to hit it high. Mm. Alright, that was a success. Successful on that one. Let's see, the next one is, alright, this one is one of my favorite ones, just because it really makes it so hard. Head tilt way to the left. Okay? So i got to tilt my head all the way this way and still try to hit a solid shot from there. And you might be, you're probably thinking, like, well, what's the point of doing all these crazy variations? The point, just basically, the point is it works. Okay? This will work, and then you do this for a while, and you're going to start to unlock your own natural swing, what you like and what you don't like. Oh, great shot. So my head was like this, and I still had to try to hit a good shot. Now, next one I have here is ball position back. So this is one of those ones I call counterindicated. So the ball position is way to the back, but i got to hit a fade, okay? So come over here. Put the ball position back. It's not extreme back. It's just, like, along my right foot. But so this is counterindicated, meaning that I could usually hit a, a draw from this position a little easier. So I got to figure out a way to hit a fade from here. Yeah, it was perfect. So it was draw ball position was back, and I had to hit a fade. All right, so here's the famous flamingo drill, and I got to fade it from a flamingo drill. Also counterindicated. So, flamingo drill, but I got to hit a fade. That didn't, uh, it actually did, it faded about a yard, but impact wasn't awesome. Let's have a little bit more patience. A little more swing balance, that's better. Okay, next one. This is, oh, a P2 stopper and hit a fade. So over here. So I gotta take it back and stop here and then hit a fade. Mm. Yeah, exactly. That one was really good. Straightening up on the downswing, yeah. All right, and this one is rotate low. So this is on the way on the way through. I just got to feel like total rotation through the ball, which is something I usually don't feel. So I'm here, and just rotate through the ball. 
That was good. That was really good. And I don't think one of you guys just commented. I don't think I straightened too much on that one. This is flamingo drill. Hit a draw. I can do that. I had a flamingo drill fade, so I should be able to hit a flamingo drill draw here. Flamingo drill. Hit a draw. Oh, I topped that one. Damn, somebody put that in my head. You know, it's just me. Our flamingo drill. Up on this one to hit a draw. Man. It's just tough for me right now. So, and you'll find out. Some of these, like, you know, some nights you're good at certain cards and you're bad at other cards. I got this one. That was great. I wasn't very good body balance at first, and then it got really good. All right, this says daily backswing. So I have to take a John Daly size backswing. Okay. So we go really long with the backswing and, and hit it. Oh, that was good. See, of all these cards, I've noticed that I do best with the card that says John Rahm. Oh, Happy New Year to you. Thanks. Happy New Year, everybody. Let me know your golf resolution for this year, because mine is to practice more, so I'm getting off to it right away tonight. All right, heel toe. So this is a weird one, where you rock, you start on your heels, and then you have to hit it on your toes. So you're basically early extending on purpose here. There's one that, that's called toe heel, so you start on your toes and you have to hit it on your heels. And this one is start on your heels and hit it on your toes. So the thing about, oh, I hit that pretty good for that one because that's a tough one to do. The thing about this is that you want to fail. You want to fail sometimes on certain cards because you want to, uh, when you fail during certain things like that heel toe, it gets your brain to realize that, okay, that's not the, the way to swing. If you're just trying to do the right thing all the time, your brain just gets confused because, you know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Mine is driving. My vlog on distance to the hole being... Uh, I missed that one. It won't pop up if you guys don't shoot the super chat because I can't see that. Mine is driving. Hole being better than strokes gained using sets was great. Oh, thank you. Um, no turning cast. So this is that famous video that I did with Monty. And I got to hit it mid, mid-level. All right, that wasn't too bad. Okay. Stay tuned, guys. i got 10% more battery left. So we'll go through a few more of these before I take off. All right, this says get very low in the backswing. So that means in my backswing, go here and so we get low and that. And if you guys can hear me over at the mat here, just so I can check if this microphone and my headset is working, just put the comment... Um, Put the comment like the the letter the letter A and just make that as a comment the letter A so that if I can know that I you can hear me over here. All right, so I have to get very low here. So that get low here low. These are really hard for me to hit. Yeah, that's really hard for me to do because I usually get way high in the backswing. But let me see if I can actually hit one good this way. Start up kind of tall. Get low. Mm. That was okay enough. Not great, but okay enough. 
Oh, you guys can hear that over there. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Who is that saying that? Somebody has the, uh, t- like, the ultimate cheater's tip from uh, Goldfinger the movie. Let's see. Uh, sumo and hit high draws. So I'm just going to keep doing this until my camera dies. So if the, the video stops suddenly, you guys will know that the battery died. All right, so sumo means take, like, a sumo stance, like I'm, like I'm a sumo wrestler, or, like, get ready to, to pounce on something. It means really solid legs and hit a high draw with this sumo stance. Mm. Oh, shoot. Not great, but that's okay. The thing I've learned about doing these cards, there's a John Rom card in here, and I hit the ball the best when I do the, the when I use the John Rom card, which is pretty awesome. Feet together, hit a fade. Okay. If you go to, so yeah, exactly. There's one. That, let me know what is your guys' favorite ever golf scene in a movie. The the Goldfinger golfing match is with, without a doubt. Strict lo- uh, yeah, what does he say? Ah, too bad. Strict rules of golf, Goldfinger. You lose. <laughs> and Goldfinger's like, I found my ball. And uh, he's like, no, he hasn't. He's like, how do you know? Because <laughs> I'm standing on his ball. All right, feet together, fade. The price is wrong, Bob. I was just watching that today with my, uh, my eight-year-old Xander. He really liked that. Yeah, that was good. Okay, feet together, hit a draw, pretty simple, so the feet are together. That was good, and it's drawing. Not the purest shot I've ever hit, but it was good. Okay, all right, this says hit a drive. I don't want, I don't have a T. Uh, whatever, I'll use my three-way. One thing I have to be better about in 2019, 2020, one thing I have to be better about in 2020 is uh, when I practice using driver more often. Okay. All right, nothing weird. It just says hit a drive, so I'm going to hit this through a drive, like on a hole. Oh, Perfect. It's about as straight as you can point. That's good. So the thing you'll notice is when you're doing all these crazy variations of all these these cards here, um, all these crazy variations with all these cards, you'll notice when you go to hit a normal shot, it's a lot better. I gave up both your... We were in no condition to putt. I don't know that movie. I gave us both twos that back there. We were in no condition to putt. That sounds funny. I, I, I can't remember where that's from. Our ball position way back. Hit, give, hit a draw. So, yeah, the thing about this is, like, if, if you just have to hit a normal shot now, it's, like, kind of unlocks you. And for me, who's, like, an overly technical-minded person, if I, if I give myself a constraint, like ball position way back we hit a draw I'm just concentrating on hitting a good shot if the, if it's just normal man I, there's about 100,000 things I could think of ball position back hit a draw <clears throat> perfect let me see your comments you guys are making me laugh tonight what do you think you look like hitting chili <laughs> yeah right from from uh, Tin Cuff yeah, Mike Austin stuff is legit. I have about here, let me see a uh, blank card. Uh, Ryan Moore hit a fade. I have about I have like a, a thick Manila envelope full of Mike Austin clippings because I know Mike Austin's biographer, and he gave me all of the notes from the book that he wrote. And the thing about Mike Austin stuff, and I've had people write me and stuff like, oh, all that stuff Mike Austin said was lies, like. All of his things were just like wild exaggerations, the things that weren't true. But like, I have all these clippings news, of newspaper articles and things like from the time 
that kind of like substantiate like a lot of what Mike Austin said. So a lot of it was um, hyperbole or something, but but then a lot of it like there's newspaper clippings of him playing in turn in like pro tournaments with like super famous golfers and um, you know they they would have a newspaper clipping about an exhibition he gave where in the newspaper article from like the 50s they were talking about him hitting like a seven iron 250 yards and stuff like that with one hand or maybe it was like 210 with one hand or something like that where he's got it on the rope like this and he's throwing it through there that's one of the most amazing things what do I have to do oh Ryan Moore hit a fade so that's Ryan Moore when he did this this is one of the hardest things for me to do oh I did it though it wasn't awesome but I did it yeah so let me know your that's it, really good. Live chat. Yeah, exactly. So Ryan Moore was my card. See Ryan Moore there? So I had to hit a Ryan Moore shot that was a fade. And here's a Raymond Floyd shot, which is kind of the opposite, where I have to hit a... It says fade as well. So this is one of those counterindicated kind of things where... Watch. So it goes Raymond Floyd here, but then hit a fade. So Raymond Floyd would kind of be a draw bias thing because you're getting so in. But you got to hit a fade. So I'm going to open my stance a little bit. Raymond Floyd. I hit a fade. Yeah, that was good. There's a guy who's a swing impersonator. All right, so this is my favorite card. John Rom. Hello. There's a guy who's a swing impersonator that's around here who does amazing imperson- impersonations of cards. I would, I would really like to talk to him about this stuff. Nico Bellini, that would be cool. I think he's a, he's a writer now. He used to be a pro golfer. Okay. So John Rahm, like this, and hit it low. See, I hit the John Rahm shots the best. That went just a little left. But the solidness of strike, I could tell, was was really great. I'm going to try that again. John Rahm hit it low. <clears throat> yeah, that's just awesome shot. Not low. Not low at all, but it was... Uh, compression of it was great. I just have fun hitting these shots. John Rahm hit it low. <clears throat> yeah, see, I, I have to... I might have to change to be my just regular swing. All right, here are my thoughts on single length irons because somebody asked me. Lead foot back and draw. The, if you, if I was if starting to learn about this stuff, see how I'm doing all these different swings and it's making me better? So lead foot back and hit a draw. That kind of explains why I don't think single length irons are a good idea. In your mind, you would think like, all right, they're all the same length. Let me... Well, first of all, with single-length irons, it's a non-starter. If you don't have a club head speed of over 110 with driver, I would say it's a non-starter that you shouldn't be using single-length irons because you're gonna need, you need a lot of speed in order to get that height on the low, long iron. And that's one of the things that Bryson is working on now. The, the reason that he's been so... Um, uh, working so hard on his fitness and stuff to get his ball speed up is because he knows in order for his swing and for his equipment and all that stuff to work, like, and also, like, with his driver, like, being, like, what is it, like, four degrees or something, he needs, like, a, a ball speed, like, well over 180. So, but for the same reason that all these different variations work, that's why you, all different lengths of irons will actually make you a better ball striker, I believe. All right, hit a, hit a draw. That's really good. I really like when I'm, when I'm super open like this, like that card just told me to be. It feels like... This guy on YouTube, Steve Johnson, talks about it with his Eureka method, but it feels like a Bubba Watson thing. All right. All right, last card, I'll do flip it. So that's when... I have some of these cards that are called, like, no rotate, just... This is a foreign... No rotate, just absolute um, rotation. And this 
would be kind of the opposite of it, where I'm just taking it here, and I'm just feeling like I'm flipping at the, the ball as much as I can. Okay? So, it didn't say, I think it was, what did it say high? Flip it high? See, that's just, that's so pure. Now, my, what I felt there, and this is kind of like early Be Better Golf stuff, but what I felt there was like I was just doing this as hard as I can. But what actually happened was it accelerated my arm, so at impact I was like that, and then I went through it, and I just hit it so good. All right, so thanks a lot for watching, guys. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. I'm, I'm going to uh, sign off now because my battery's going to die, and I want to put an actual ending on this. Um, I have some Be Better Golf Schools and some other stuff coming up. We're going to be doing a lot of live broadcasts from the PGA Show in Orlando coming up really soon at the PGA Show in Orlando. My nephew Jack and I are going there, and we're thinking about wearing matching outfits. And my nephew Jack really wants to wear something that looks really outrageous and really, like, uh, stands out a lot. And we want to interview a lot of different people and stuff. But we're going to be doing a lot, a lot of live broadcasts from there. So make sure to click the uh, click the little bell so that you'll be notified when we go online. I want to say a special thank you to us. Oh, it went away. But a special thank you to the guy that wrote the Super Chat comment, Charles Steinhauer. So somebody, somebody sent a Super Chat. So I want to do a huge... Thank you to that. So uh, next time I go on, you guys can uh, do that kind of thing. It really helps the channel. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you later. Bye. Wear a purple and white, then. That's a good idea, actually. That would look White pants and purple shirt. That might look good. Yeah, the, the working the variations helps my tempo. I'll go through your things. What would you say you are drawing more from, Monty or Malaska? Um... Monty, I'd say, of the two, but it's real close. I mean, I draw a lot from both of them. Um, you know Eamon Darcy swing. Yeah, I do, but I wouldn't be able to imitate it. I don't know it that well. Do I ever take a full practice swing? When I first started playing golf, I did. Um, Lee Como. Yeah, I've I've looked at some of Lee's stuff. Some of it, some of what he said said is good, especially about like swing balance and kind of. That you don't want to have swing balance you want because you you need to, like where it goes kind of things don't just equal because you need it to to peak into speed um, movie comments back swing was good there oh, thank you that's rare driver off the deck okay cool thank you guys yeah this is the new practice philosophy. Stay tuned. We're going to be coming out with an app. It's basically like a... It won't be called that, but it will basically be like a Be Better Golf app. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Bye. Yes, I am on YouTube. This is YouTube. Thanks. Later. Yes, I'm on Instagram, too, if that's what you're saying. And it's BB underscore golf show. So follow me on there. See you later, guys. Bye.